Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're at Sensei 6. They are the premier wheel rebuilders and refinishers in Southern California. So they're located in the city of industry. You can find them on social media. You can find them online at sensei6.com. And we'll talk more about that with the owner, Jordan, here shortly. So let's go ahead and go inside, take a look at Sensei 6, and find a little bit more about them. All right, so we're here. Here's Jordan. He's the owner of Sensei 6. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about his company as well as what they do here. How's it going? I'm good. Alright. So I've got a few questions for my subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be potential customers and I guess I'll let you guys talk a little bit about what you guys do here. Mm -hmm. uh, well we specialize in mostly Japanese wheels um, but we also work with other uh, American wheels as well. Uh, mostly three-piece but we also work on two-piece wheels, one-piece wheels. We really just specialize in used wheels, but we can order brand new wheels for customers as well. Uh, three wheel, uh, three piece wheels are a lot more customizable as far as you could choose your own sizings, your own finishes, um, even things like step lift conversions, reverse lift conversions, double step lift conversions. There's a lot of things that you could do with three piece wheels. Two piece wheels, a little bit less. One piece wheels, uh, we could customize the colors that you want. How, how would you go about using a set of Japanese wheels on a European car, let's say. Well, um, not to say that Japanese wheels aren't going to be in like a 50120 mm -hmm. bolt pattern, for example, but uh, because most of our wheels come from Japan and most of the wheels in um, on a Japanese car uses 50114, we can redrill it to other bolt patterns such as 50120, 50108, 50112, oh, wow. like for Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only bolt patterns that we don't touch will be 5x100 and 5x130 just because it's too far apart and okay. if we do that it's not safe. And I mean as far as re-drilling, so if we wanted to, uh, like you could also use a spacer right if you really wanted to or you would use an adapter. An yeah. adapter like yeah. a spacer adapter? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, but like the re-drilling it just makes it so that it's a lot easier to use it and you can adjust the fitment, like you said, by changing yes. the lips and the barrels. So, so if you are using, like for example, like a five by one twenty to a five by one fourteen adapter, mm -hmm. um, that if you do that, you don't have to redraw the the wheels, right? Okay. But you have to compensate for you know the thickness of the adapter itself. So for example, if it's like a twelve or fifteen millimeter mm -hmm. adapter, then the wheel's gonna poke out 15 millimeters. Okay. And if that's too aggressive for people, then maybe redrilling is a better alternative. Okay. All right, so you guys heard it. You can use Japanese wheels on your Beamer. Just gotta get them redrilled. All right, so as far as new wheels go, uh, what do you guys have access to? Like, what can you guys get? Mm, pretty much anything from Japan that's in production uh, for new wheels. Uh, so brands such as Vogue Racing, mm -hmm. uh, SSR wheels, work wheels, we could pretty much get you anything you want. Okay, so you got you mentioned like you guys do a lot of J Japanese wheels. I mean that's what you guys specialize in. Mm -hmm. But let's say if I went and bought a set of wheels somewhere else, I saw like an AC Schnitzer or a wheel or something, right? And I brought it to you guys. Would you guys be able to help me out in, in like in terms of redrilling, refinishing, and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And as far as refinishing and all that, you I know you said you can color match a lot of things. And usually, do you guys what, what type of finish are you guys doing? Um, there's many different types of finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, the most typical what we do for people is powder coating. Okay. Uh, there's literally like thousands and yeah. thousands of different colors that you could powder coat with. The most basic ones are like you know gloss white, matte black, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, we could do metallic colors. Uh, we could do transparent colors, which is usually done over polish. Um, so with, we could also do polish. Okay. Uh, we could do plating, which uh, for example, chrome plating, mm -hmm. copper plating, oh, wow. uh, nickel plating. Nickel plating is actually something that it's only, as far as I'm concerned, only we do here. Okay. Um, we also do brushing. Okay. Um, so the, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, there's a lot of things that you could do. Uh, you could choose a matte finish, a gloss finish, transparent finish, candy, polish, chrome, copper, and so on and so on. Man. Um, yeah, so I mean, powder coat is a way to do it. Polishing, uh, plating, and um, painting it, or well, like liquid paint that people will use on automotive cars. Okay. So like, if it's color match, we'll use paint. Okay. Yeah. So like candy colors and stuff like that, would that is that still available through powder coat as it's well? It's available through okay. powder coat and right. paint. Okay. So I mean, pretty much any finish you yeah, guys you guys got. Much it. anything. Awesome. Yeah. I would give a strong advice to everyone. Just you know. You don't settle for something just because the price is cheaper. Yes. 
definitely go for something that you really really want it might be more expensive it might it might even take a long time to mm -hmm. receive but in the end you know you you're really getting what you want and you know you'll be happy with it because you know it's, it was worth the wait exactly yeah. yeah i've got subscribers that like you know everywhere spread out through this country even international ones uh, how do you guys go about doing non-local customers because you guys are here in southern california in yes. the city of industry uh, we actually do it pretty often. Okay. Uh, a lot of our customers are out of state uh, and we do get local customers as well. Um, so for people that are out of state, they, just, they pretty much have to reach out to us by calling, emailing. Uh, usually people will have a lot of questions before they're committed mm -hmm. to purchasing a set of wheels. But once we have all that sorted out, um, basically the customer will leave a deposit with us. We'll start building the wheels. Um, once it's complete, we'll let the customer know. We'll show them pictures of how it, you know that your wheels are done, ready to go. Okay. Uh, they pay the remainder, and then we pretty much ship out. Huh. So I mean, every time when we have a like, like an update on mm -hmm. some type of progress going on with their wheels, we will let the customer okay. know. Sometimes it could take a little yeah, bit longer than definitely. Than I mean, usual. everything's custom. Yeah, so. everything like exactly everything is custom. Um, so like the turnaround time to rebuild a set of wheels could be like something like a week mm -hmm. to a couple of months okay. it really depends on you know, the availability of certain parts mm -hmm. um, how complicated the finish is this and you know just a lot of stuff yeah i mean there's yeah. all these variables so here's the last question i'm sorry i'm taking up so much of your time mm -hmm. but uh what sets sensei 6 apart from other rebuilders and refinishers um the biggest thing i would probably say is attention to detail mm -hmm. i mean there's a lot of examples that we could point out but one of the biggest ones probably the sealing process mm -hmm. people can try to diy doing their own wheels or send it to like another rebuilder mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not very experienced and not knowing what you're doing you could really mess it up and sealing is very important because right. if it's not sealed properly you could have a leak on your oh. house Oh wow! Yeah, and nobody wants it. Yeah. Of course, if you know, if you have a good-looking seal, mm -hmm. it, you know, it makes the whole wheel just look more complete. Okay. Um, so that's definitely one of the things. Uh, another thing that I could say is, um, like mentioned previously, we always follow up with our customers, so no one's left in the dark. Exactly, and that's one of the most important things. Yeah. But yeah, so that's it for the questions. Let's go check out some of the builds that they had, as well as uh, you guys probably show us. Assembling of a, a, a set of wheels for us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Awesome, let's go. So Jordan's gonna show us a wheel that's already been separated, and this is a three-piece wheel. So he's gonna try to explain how uh, the three-piece wheels actually work. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So we have a work Rezax here. This is actually a magnesium version of it. Um, this is before you know, everything's refinished. Oh, so that's just like a used wheel that you yeah, just separated? Yeah, a used wheel. Okay. We already got this separated. Um, so this is a used inner barrel, mm -hmm. right? It's not refinished, looks dirty, yeah. but of course we could refinish everything. Mm -hmm. um, so this particular wheel is a sandwich mount. You have the inner barrel, that's one piece. All right. You have the face or the center, two piece. And then here's the lip. The lip's already been repolished. Oh yeah. That's the third piece. That's okay. why it's called three-piece wheel. Oh, three wow. pieces. Um, and then everything is tied up together by the hardware. Both go in the front. The nuts, they go in the back. Um, by adjusting different sizes of the lip and the inner barrel, we're able to achieve different kind of widths and offsets offset that you want. Okay. Uh, every wheel have different combinations, so it's difficult to say, but that's our job to figure that out for you. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so you guys saw just that set that was already taken apart. But that same type of wheel, here it is already refinished. The lip is actually the same kind that he showed you, but this one has been refinished in a gold. And then the barrel is matte black. But you can see right here, I mean, it looks completely different, almost like a brand new wheel.
All right, so here is that wheel that Jordan was showing us that's not been refinished. Only the lip is new, so it looks like it's newer. But this wheel has not been refinished. But here's the same exact wheel, same exact specs with being refinished. So they're Rezacs too, obviously. So the face is nickel brushed uh, with a matte clear coat on top. Uh, it's powder, actually, matter of fact. And we have a gold lip, which has also been powder coated. And then we also have a matte black barrel which has also been powder coated. And also, all, as you can see, all these bolts, they are black chrome. So here's the black chrome bolt with a zinc nut. That's another aspect of the wheel that can actually change the whole look of the wheel. And even other hardware such as the center cap, all that stuff can be customizable. And these have actually been re-drilled, so you can see that they are 5x120 now, as opposed to what they came from stock. 